Hi, this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and this is a video called After the Jar is Over. You might uh, have heard a very old song from the uh, 1892 called After the Ball is Over, and the refrain is, uh, After the ball is over, after the music's done. Anyway, I got thinking of that sort of, what do we do after the jar is over, once we've finished uh, going through a jewelry jar on a video? And uh, I have a bunch of things here that I'd like to uh, show you what I do. So, this is probably first on my list. This, you might remember, was a uh, Western Germany um, plastic bead um, necklace, two strand. And the only thing wrong with it is that... This is detached from there. And you can, if we zoom in, you can see it's just a simple uh, twisted loop. So I'm going to do a quick repair here. Um, and this is funny, even though I'm sort of watching through the camera to do this, I have to take my glasses off. And I think it's more of a, a habit thing than anything else because that's what I would do if I were doing it in person so I probably don't need to take my glasses off but I do need to get my little pliers in there um, just have to open this loop a little bigger and all the beads are double-sided so I shouldn't have to worry about the orientation but just to be on the safe side. There we go. Pull everything apart. Slip the uh, loop through there. Tighten it up with pliers. So once again, they go back in the way they started, and I'll have to see if I've got a decent, oh, could be closer. And you want to use the same sort of um, needle-nosed curving pliers that were used to do this originally, So, because you don't want to flatten out the loop. I'm trying to get the smaller end in the loop so that I can yeah tuck it right down in there like that so that's a little bit more yeah there we go so this uh, necklace so there is a right way and a wrong way of putting the clasp in if you put it in the wrong way then the necklace ends up being twisted and there we are with the repaired necklace and then I will put it in its own um, bag we'll put bits in this and oh that's pretty good I'll take it up and put it in my yeah I'll probably put it loose in the drawer with my other vintage West German necklaces that bag's a little small, but it keeps it uh, nicely off to the side. Um, something like this, um, overstretched, so there really isn't any way around this. You know, in with the um, this is uh, Velux uh, sheets. You can buy a blanket and uh, cut it into beading sheets rather than paying a fortune for them individually. Oh, this has got some bead spacers in it. I didn't realize. Oh, that's good. Look at how yucky this cord is. You know, that cord would have been nice, pure white to begin with. It is the, I think it, it is the good quality stuff, the multi-strand stuff, the uh, Opiongo, I think it is, something like that. But uh, it's had its day, so now I will just 
put I'll probably put all of these and the little beads together into a bag if I have one the right size. Here's a fairly large one. Mm, actually, that's too big. So, what have I got? This will be better. And then I don't have to worry about losing these little beads as well. Oh, and I may I may go hunt down the um, the beads I have that I think will make a necklace with this and uh, try to show them to you um, later in this video. So there's another piece dealt with. Um, these beads, I'm going to take them off their string. Um, looking at them more closely, you can see there's some color imperfections the glaze doesn't go right around the edges there's another one um, so I'm gonna take them off the string just because it's not very nice string and I'm gonna probably give these away put them in a bag I mean I might it, it is possible to uh, I suppose to sort through them and find the best ones and keep those but for now I think oh, I gotta get me some more bags luckily these bags are very inexpensive to purchase So those I will probably I'll put with for now with my kids jewelry unless I decide to do some um, wind chimes. These would be good on wind chimes because they would last very well outside. They would uh, weather very well. Um, and then the same with this necklace off with the string. You don't want to use your good. Uh, Jewelry cutters for stuff like this. I mean, it's not, the string's not going to really dull them, but not um, the best. These ones are, are graduated, so I'm going to keep them together. But these are much nicer. They're not, they're much better. Uh, they need some cleaning, you can see, but they're not uh, as mis- uh, colored or misglazed. I think actually these are straight white clay. Let's do this so we have focus inside them. Yeah. So the, the other ones were brown clay with glaze. So there's that nice little bag of beads. And uh, now this, I thought this just needed cleaning. Then I got looking at it actually under my under uh, my jeweler's loop, and trying to figure out why there were these small beads at the back, and then larger beads, and then again on the other side here, um, small beads up to here, and then these miscolored beads started looking at them, and they looked more wooden. Or definitely they're not glass like the others and for some reason there's a glass one here and then there's a, a coated one there so this one actually started cracking off just as I was investigating things so I'm gonna take this apart um, because it's obviously been restrung or had something done to it so that because normally there would be a clasp here and uh, these wooden beads that are discoloring would not be part of the necklace. Um, so uh, this, these all need to be cleaned. There, you can see the dirt, the dirt in between the uh, the beads. But these are not painted. These are glass, unlike these ones at the end here that are peeling and pitting. That are so. Um, it's actually much. 
easier to wash it the first time and it's actually on the string still. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that away. I will wash the beads once. Then I will take them off the string and wash them again so that I can get in between them here. As you can see, there's good junk there. And then they can be restrung. They're a beautiful graduated set of uh, milk glass beads, so certainly worth saving. Um, this pearl necklace, uh, where's that funny bead? So it has to, I have to do some trimming right here. There's a string sticking out and that's pretty straightforward. I'll take my uh, nice sharp, if I can focus in on that. There we go. Stay focused there. Sharp clippers. And trim. I don't know if I can get any in there any closer or not. Um, maybe from this side. Come on, keep focusing. Da -da -da. There, that's better. Okay, so that's much better. Um, Let's focus back down here. The um, one bead that had the defect in it, I've scraped it. I just can't remember where it is. But it's it was very obvious once I got these under the loop. There we go. Sorry for all. Uh, oh, if you bear with me. So you can see that these are not real pearls. There's where the paint has come off of that particular one. But you have to get... Uh, up to where you can see my ragged fingernails before you can uh, actually tell that. These are really good imitation pearls. Um, the other thing that... Um, um, so these, uh, they need a clean and they probably should be restrung. But they're right now they're very wearable the way they are. So... Um, Except for the fact that I cleaned up that one and, and uh, figured out how the clasp went in. I'll also, I'm also going to clean up the back of the clasp here. Uh, give me a second and I'll find my uh, tool for doing that. So a little bit more shining. And now we're getting it shiny everywhere. A little bit more there. It is... Is a little more pitted. So normally I would do this, you know, until something is really nice and shiny. Almost got it. I'm kind of doing it on the edge here where the. So there's very little left to shine. Um, and this can also be used. I'm going to use the a six, the softer side on the outside edge and on the top and on the other outside edge. See, I'm getting the dark on my fingers, but what a, a lovely shine that gives everything. Um, and I just have to work on those little pieces that are rougher. And I can do that with the, uh, the clasp as well. Shine up that side. Turn it over. Shine up that. So a little bit more work. I got dirty fingers, but that's what happens not too much left and that little spot's going to be gone and it's some this is very very mild if this was uh um sterling this would this would work to take off the uh 
um, the oxidization, the tarnish, so to speak. And you can see we're almost gone. Yep, just a little bit. So I'll leave it there, but you can see the huge improvement in the uh, polish on the back of this. I'm also going to test this for silver, even though it's not marked, it uh, doesn't react to the magnet at all. So there, much shinier clasp, and I'll have to give those a uh, a clean. I'm just going to wipe them probably down with a, a baby wipe, unless I decide to restring them. Now this is a little trickier. This is vintage piece. Um, this side needs a chain. That's not a problem. This side, these are molded in place beads, and it's come ripped here. So I'm going to go get a little tool, and I'll be right back and see if this works. Well, the tool I was looking for, I can't find. Uh, it's not good because I usually I have four different bead reamers. Um, I have a very long, thin, narrow one. I was hoping, since this is molded in place, and that there was... Uh, string in there. I was hoping to ream out the string well enough that I could then put a wire, glue a wire in here with a loop on it, basically an eye pin, and use that to uh, fix the necklace. But since I don't have the right tools, Sorry, I gotta trim off this string that's driving me nuts. It doesn't belong there. I don't know why it's there. You know what? It's maybe that's how somebody tried to repair the necklace by um, adding some thread. There's lots of creative ways out there that people try to fix things. Let me grab a pin. You never know what tools you're gonna need when you're when you start repairing things. So I just want to see if I can get in there and get that extra thread out. Well, okay. There it comes. So, I'll uh, probably have to do this off camera because I can't figure out how it's, oh, never mind. There, so that goes in the garbage. That's cleaned off nicely. And I just have to find the right tool to get in here. I mean, this is working fine enough. All right, so I have, but I want to get a much finer hole in there. And then what I'll put in, um, I'll show you. As I said, you never know what uh, tools you're gonna need. And so off. Oh, there's a bead from those other ones that I took apart. Don't want to lose that. And I'm going to put the uh, pearls in a, a little bag for now. The faux pearls. So what I'm going to do to repair this is I'll make a, a hole deep enough. It's pretty deep now. But I just have to um, how short do I need it? Oh, let's go like that. Okay, so took the uh, eye pin. Is it going to be short enough? Oh, yeah, okay, so there we go. Almost repaired. Get some 
Zippity doo dah glue. Not sure if the GS uh, Hypo Cement is going to be the best here or not. This is uh, great jewelry glue. Trying to do it on the camera is a little crazy. There. Well, actually, you can see how deep I made the hole already. This doesn't fill holes the way that uh, E6000 does, but it glues metal to other items very well. So, there. Okay, that's in. I'm losing all kinds of GS Hypo Cement. It, it comes out really easily if you squeeze it. So I don't have anywhere to put this, so I'm going to just uh, find a tissue to wipe it on. And then the beauty of Hypo Cement is that it uh, has this needle that seals off there. Possible to do camera almost but so there it is GS hypo cement um, you can buy it um, at like uh, Michael's Hobby Lobby that kind of place when you buy it online make sure it comes with a serial number on it I buy it direct from the supplier which is uh, has a, an office here a jewelry supply place uh, here in uh, Ontario Canada but you can also, it's also available from GS Supplies in Rochester, New York. And uh, the nice thing is it doesn't, really, doesn't glue your fingers to your fingers. Like uh, contact cement does. And it doesn't ruin your beads and things. So this will be um, the right color. And once this is solid, then just as this end is hooked around there, I will be able to open up this eye with the pliers and hook it back on here. And then this part of the necklace will be repaired. For the other side I need some chain. So let's see if I have any spare chain in my little baggies here. I might not have thought to brought any spare chain. Um, let's see, come on, on in there, no, okay, so the next thing for me to do will be to find some chain. So there's another thing, almost repaired. And I, I don't do this for everything, but because this is vintage molded in place, two strand and a pretty, pretty green, I thought I'd show you an idea of, of what you could do when it's uh, um, the, uh, only the end bead that has become detached like that. Other things I do when um, I have to deal with the ends of the jars, I have these single earrings. Here's my little bag of... Uh, special pieces. Well, I guess I don't have one. Well, I can make a new one. Um, what I will do is take these apart, save the beads, um, so we've got, actually this is quite a nice ear wire, so we'll just uh, Wrong pliers. Oh, well, those were cutters, not pliers. So I just have to take this. I'm not uh, worried about keeping the shape right now of this uh, ring. I just want to open it up enough that I can slip the ear wire off. That's a, a pretty ear wire. Too bad we didn't have two of them. And then the bead is already to save, to repurpose. This one, I will uh, take the ear wire off too, because this could be put on a charm bracelet of some sort, but you know, in with a 
a huge bunch of charms. What's the easiest way to do this? Let's take it off that way. So there, we just take that off, put it to the side. And uh, not, sometimes those bits of wire are useful. Here's a nice pretty ear wire too, but only one of them. So I will uh, detach the set, clean up the, uh, straighten up the ear wire and save it. So I'll save those just for replacement wires and I won't take this apart yet because I could use, I could break it into three things but those are just little bits and pieces that will uh, come in handy when repurposing even though those uh, are plastic. So one final thing, this necklace doesn't need much, it needs basically a big ring here. Uh, in the matching color, in sort of a gold tone, br a brass color. Um, but it's a short necklace. And I'm thinking I'd like to try some other beads out with this. So hang on a second while I grab some beads. I had high hopes for these, um, these brown beads, but now that I put them there, they really don't uh, enhance that in any way. Um, these aren't a bad color. They just, they, you know, kind of in the same ballpark. But so I got looking over at these, and I'm wondering if those, those are kind of light. Those are a little darker. What else have I got here? Got some cubes. That might be interesting to do cubes or are these reds? And I think those would really brighten things up, give a bit of sparkle. Those are uh, deeper red kind of brings out the browns, whereas I think this brings out the pinks. Anything else? Those are, I think those are too dark. Those are too strong on their own. So, maybe, maybe I don't have what I, what I thought would be good matches. Those are a few things that I could try um, to use to lengthen the necklace. I think what I need is something bigger than this, because this, yeah, it's just too small. You put them in between, they're, but they're a nice color. That's a real deep red. Kind of brings out the pinks. Um, and this is, it's only two of them, but I think something slightly smaller than these could go in between there in stone and it would uh, be interesting. So, I'll have to go back to the drawing board, see what I can find, and uh, find some ways of lengthening this necklace, um, because it's just too short to be worn. Uh, what, have we, what did we decide it is here? It's, that's 12. 13 and a half. So 13 and a half isn't going to fit anybody that I know of. So I want to take it up to 16 minimum. So we'll have to see what we can do. Let's see about these ones. These are interesting. They're very light. And there's quite a few of them. That might make it an interesting combination. You kind of see those in between. 
yet. Hmm. Alrighty. I'll return to the drawing board and I'll come back and let you see what I end up with. Well, I think that's enough uh, jewelry repair for now. My, that's my fridge running in the background making all that noise. So, uh, uh, going through its uh, whatever cycle that is, if that's defrost or frost. Or, so, but thanks for joining me and sort of seeing after the jar is over. Um, what uh, kind of things you had to get up to and uh, both repairing and uh, looking to repurpose jewelry. Is this dry? Not quite. When it's dry, I'll, uh, I'll be fixing this necklace. Thanks very much. Pa Hood from Passions of Pastimes, where one of my pastimes is uh, Fixing jewelry, actually one of my passions is fixing rhinestone jewelry, uh, you know, vintage, uh, early 1900s to 50s, but uh, also repairing and repurposing jewelry. So uh, I hope you'll join me again for uh, some of my great pastimes. Thanks very much. Have a great day.